So the next two equations are ones that typically give students a lot more problems. And so there's some sneaky ways or some tricks that you can use to make these a little bit easier. So let's start with this equation. Uh, this equation will toggle. It's the one that I have an easier time with. Remember, you're going to be working uh, with the metals first, then the nonmetals, and then you're going to work with C, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In other words, CHO. So over here I have two carbons um, on my reactant side and one carbon on my product side. I want to balance those out, so I place a two in front of the carbon. Now I'm going to work on the hydrogens because with the CHO sequence, C is first, H is next. I have six hydrogens here, only two here, so if I place a three over here that works out to be six. So now let's take a look at the oxygens. I have two oxygens here, and when I calculate how many oxygens I have on my product side, you'll see I have four oxygens here plus one more, which is seven. And it's impossible using a whole number to get to seven when you have multiples of two. So just for a quick moment, what you're going to do is you're going to place a decimal in front of the oxygen that allows you to get 7. So I know that if I multiply 3.5 times 2, I can get those 7 oxygens. When we are working with chemical equations, you never have decimals, so we need to get rid of that decimal. And we can do that by multiplying everything by 2. So in that case, what happens? We'll cross that out. Uh, that means I have two C2H6s because two times one is two plus two times 3.5 is seven O2s. Two times two is four CO2s and two times three is six H2O. So we need to double check whether or not that worked. Sometimes it doesn't. So I look at my carbons. I have four carbons here. I have four carbons on my product side. In my reactants, I have 12 hydrogens. I have 12 hydrogens in my product side. I have 14 oxygens. So let's see if I have 14 oxygens on my product side. Four times two is eight, so eight oxygens here, plus six oxygen works out to be 14. So that works out. So just for a quick moment, you can use those decimals to make that easier. There are also other equations where you have these parentheses. And when you see these parentheses, you want to look at these uh, sequence of chemicals as one group. So do you notice how I have SO4 here and I have SO4 here? And if they are uh, written in the same order, you can use this trick. So again, we start with our metals. I have one aluminum here, and I have two aluminums here. So I'm going to place a two in front of the aluminum. That should work out. Then I look at carbon. I have one carbon here and one carbon here. So that's fine. Now here's the next trick. You're going to look at these as a unit. So for the SO4 unit, and I can look at this as a unit because it's in parentheses, I have three sets of SO4 where over here I only have one set of SO4. I want to make sure they're balanced out and I want to get three sets of SO4 on my reactant side, so I place a three in front here. With that said, that means I now have three coppers. I need to make sure to have three coppers here. So let's double check whether or not everything works out. I have two aluminums on both the reactant and product side. I have three coppers on both the reactant and product side. I have three sulfurs on my reactant side, and I have three sulfurs on my product side. I have 12 oxygens on my reactant, and I have 12 oxygen on my product. So that works out fine too. So those are some easy tricks that you can use.